Hello, everybody, and a happy Father's Day, one and all. I am Jesse Mayfield Sheehan coming to you live here from Elliott Field here in Brookline, Massachusetts. For this, the 2023 Brookline Youth Baseball Major A Division Town Championship. I am joined here by a uh, former league commissioner and former coach of Brookline Youth Baseball, Craig Chin. Craig, thank you so much for uh, joining us so here So happy today. to be here. Happy Father's Day to all. We got a great game today and really excited to be here with you, Jesse. Absolutely, and you hit the nail on the head. This should be an exciting one. The two teams coming into this contest, we've got the Guardians and the Padres. The Guardians, after a six and six campaign in the regular season, entered this tournament as the third seed and have swept their way through the competition thus far. Uh, staying in the winner's bracket throughout the tournament. Now here they are in the finals. That sweep included a narrow 4-3 to three win over these same Padres who have been on quite a Cinderella run after a rough 4-7-1 and one regular season that had them the fifth seed in the tournament. The Padres have beaten everybody except that one loss to the Guardians. So they come back from the loser's bracket into these finals. It's a double elimination tournament. So if the Guardians defeat the Padres today, they will claim the 2023 title. If the Padres win, then they're going to be coming back for essentially a game three to settle the series on Tuesday. So plenty at stake for this one. We'll have player introductions when we come back. You are watching ASPN HD. Do you want to go grab some frozen yogurt tonight? Maybe another time. Thanks, though. Hey, Charles, how do you like your burger? Ooh, well done, I hope. <sighs> I love this tree. Hey, honey. We thought we'd try something new. Family yeah, we are now. Come on, sit down. Okay, guys, what do you think? <laughs> that is you. Oh, you got jokes. You're funny. That is you. And that is your son and your other son. Learn about adopting a teen from foster care. You can't imagine the reward. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. Hello and welcome back to Elliott Field in Brookline, Massachusetts for ASPN HD. I'm Jesse Mayfield Sheehan here bringing you the 2023 Brookline Youth Baseball Major A Division Town Championship. Let's get to know some of the players we're going to be watching out here on the diamond today. And let's start with our first team, the Padres. Hi, my name is Karen Galula. I'm on the Padres. I'm nine years old and I play shortstop. My name's Ryan Chase. I play for the Padres. I'm 11 years old, and I play second base. Hi, my, my name is Dylan. I'm 11 years old, and I go to Heath School. Hi, my name's Mikey Sullivan. I'm 11 years old, and I play for the Padres, and I'm a catcher. Hi, my name's Alec Rabner. I'm 11 years old. I'm on the Padres, and I play first base. Hey, my name's Luke McIver. I'm 12 years old, and I play for the Padres. Hi, my name is Will Jakes. I'm 11 years old and I play for the Padres. Hi, my name is Holden Ben. I'm 11 years old and I play for the Padres. Hi, my name is Bobby Beeson. I'm 10 years old and I play for the Padres. Hi, my name is Richie Allen. I'm 12 years old and I play for the Padres. Hi, my name is John Galula, assistant coach of the Padres. My son's Cameron Galula. Good afternoon. Head coach John Chase here at the Padres looking to bring home a win on Father's Day. All right, let's give it up one more time for the Padres. But of course, they are just one of the two excellent teams we're going to be watching today. Let's introduce the Guardians. Hi, my name is Tycho Barton. I'm 12 years old and I play on the Guardians. Hi, my name is Max Carrier. I'm 11 year old and I'm on the Guardians. Hi, my name is Akiba Rossman, and I'm 12 years old, and I play for the Guardians. Hi, my name is Kramer. I'm 12 years old, and I play for the Guardians. Hi, my name is Mason Vo, and I'm 10 years old, and I play for the Guardians. I'm Shua Cash, and I'm 12 years old, and I play for the Guardians. Hi, my name is Hayden Hodgson, and I'm 11, and I'm on the Guardians. 
Hi, my name is Shane Cooka. Um, I'm on the Guardians. Hi, my name is Ari Block. I'm 12 years old and I'm, I'm on the Guardians. Hi, my name is Noah. I'm 12 and I play for the Guardians. I'm Ellie Abbott. I'm 11 years old and I'm playing for the Guardians. Hi, my name is Zachary Vitulo. I'm 11 years old and I'm on the Guardians. Josh Courier, assistant coach. Hanala Wiener, assistant coach of the Guardians. Let's go, Guardians. It's Cash now, assistant coach, Guardians, and president of the Arlen Shostak fan club. Oliver Barden, head coach of the Guardians. Looking forward to a great game. Thank you. All right, those are our two teams here today. We know you don't want us to waste any more time. You want to get to the action. So after a quick break, we'll be right back with the first pitch of the game. There are a lot of words I would use to describe my daughter. Kind. Strong. Hilarious. When I think about how much she's experienced in her life, on a journey that we're now on together as a family, I'll make you something to eat, okay? We can't help but be inspired by her every day. Hey, Mom, we're about to start the movie. Oh, yeah, I'll be right there. Okay. So really, we are the lucky ones. Learn about adopting a teen from foster care. You can't imagine the reward. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. Hello again, everybody, for ASPN HD. I am Jesse Mayfield Chien, joined here by former Brookline Youth Baseball coach and league commissioner Craig Chin. Craig, this, this is going to be fun. It, it really is. And I got to tell you, Jesse, I was looking through the uh, stat leaders for the league. It seems like the Padres have a pretty strong offense, and on the same side, the Guardians have a pretty strong pitching. So let's see which one wins out, but it'll be very fascinating to watch. Absolutely. Looks like the Guardians are going to be first in the field. So let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Guardians. They take the field. Uh, in, in order of batting order, first off, we have a designated hitter, number two, Max Courier. Batting second, a center fielder, number five, Taicho Barden. Batting third and starting on the mound today for the Guardians, number nine, Akiva Rosemarin. Batting cleanup, the catcher, number 13, Kramer Toto. Batting fifth, the shortstop, number seven, Mason Vo. Uh, batting sixth, the first baseman, number 34, Shua Kashno. Uh, batting seventh, the second baseman, number seven, Hayden Hodgson. Batting eighth, uh, another designated player, number eight, Shane Kutka. Uh, batting ninth, the third baseman, number 50, Aria Block. Uh, batting 10th, uh, another designated player, uh, number 3, Noach Wiener. Uh, batting 11th, the left fielder, number 6, Ellie Abbott. And batting 12th, the right fielder, number 11, Zach Vitulo. So that is the starting lineup for the Guardians, and soon to come up will be the Padres. Batting order for them, leading off the center fielder, number five, Cam Galula. Batting second, the second baseman, number nine, Ryan Chase. Batting third, the shortstop, number eight, Dylan Farrell. Batting cleanup, the catcher, number 13, Mikey Sullivan. Batting fifth, the left fielder, number 22, Alec Rabiner. Batting sixth, the right fielder, number 34, Luke McIver. Batting seventh and starting on the mound for the Padres, number 22, Will Jakes. Batting eighth, the third baseman, number 11, Holden Ben. Batting ninth, the first baseman, number seven, Bobby Beeston. And batting 10th, the designated hitter, number 99, Richie Allen. So those are our starters today. We see Rose Marin warming up on the mound for the Guardians, and we see about to step into the box for the Padres, the center fielder, number five, Cam Galula. 
Galula, 10 years old. He's played one year here in the majors division. He's played shortstop, pitcher, second base, and first base. Likes short and first the best. His favorite highlight of the season so far uh, was catching the final out of the game that advanced the Padres to the championship. Uh, he plays on the Boston Prime Club team, and when he's not playing baseball, he enjoys football, going to Red Sox games, and hanging out with friends. That is strike one to Galula off the first pitch of the game from Rosemarin. That one is in there as well. Uh, oh, my mistake, the first pitch was a ball. It is a one and one count. And he makes contact here. It's a chopper to short, fielded by the shortstop, thrown to first, not in time. Galula legs it out for an infield single. I'll tell you, left side bat, ground ball to the left side. His speed just beat it out, Jesse. Absolutely. Now up to the plate for the Padres is number nine, Ryan Chase. Uh, Chase is, uh, according to his sheet, he's 10 years old, but his uh, age, according to the league, is 11, so must be uh, some weird rounding up kind of situation. He's played two years in the majors. He's made one all-star appearance. He's played second base, shortstop, and the outfield. His favorite highlight of the season, hitting a triple and being on the same team as a number of good friends as he fouls off the first pitch down the third baseline. That'll be strike one. Uh, Chase plays for the Triple Crown Kings club team. And when he's not playing baseball, he enjoys football, basketball, wiffle ball, and hanging with friends and family. That one misses, ball one, one and one the count. Yeah, the runner at first, Jesse, doesn't look like he's gonna run, but let's take a look. He's got some speed. And there's another chopper. It's juggled by Rose Marin, and he's not gonna chase that one down. And it's another reach on a grounder into the infield. I'm telling you, the Padres couldn't ask for anything else. First two batters are on, you know, they, they hit the ball in the infield, but they got uh, no outs with runner in scoring position. Now coming up to the plate for the Padres, number eight, Dylan Farrell. First pitch, and Farrell fouls that one off for strike one. Farrell, he's 11 years old, he's played two years in the majors, has made one all-star appearance, uh, plays shortstop, pitcher, catcher, and center field, but enjoys shortstop the most. His favorite highlight of the season was a three-game winning streak after losing a bunch of one-run games. His club team is Boston Prime. He hits a grounder, fielded by Rosemary in this time, and gets the lead runner at third. That'll be the first out. Oh, the great play by the pitcher, right back at him. He could have went to first for the easy out, but he took, a, he took a look and he got the lead runner. One down, runners still at first and second. Now coming up to the plate, number 13, Mikey Sullivan. Sullivan, 11 years old, two years in the majors, two all-star appearances. As in comes the first pitch, big swing and a miss, strike one. Sullivan has played catcher, pitcher, and outfield, likes catcher the most. His favorite highlight of the season, putting the run Barrero on my teammates. <laughs> That's gotta be some kind of dugout tradition as Sullivan fouls that one off for strike two. Sullivan's club team is Boston Prime, and when not playing baseball, he enjoys hockey, listening to music, and water skiing. Hmm. With club baseball, I'm not sure how much time you have for water skiing, but I, it's great to have, to love the sport. Yeah, it, clearly he makes time. Swing and a miss, Sullivan goes down on strikes. Big second out get for Rose Marin, as he is close to getting out of this early first inning jam with no score but he's gonna need to face down another one of the better hitters here in the BYB this year. Number 22, Alec Rabiner. First pitch, hits a grounder past the pitcher. Feel, no, juggled at second and he's not gonna collect it in time and he's going to reach. A little shaky defense for the Guardians to start, but they're one out away from getting out of this, so. 
Absolutely true. And in order to do that, they're going to get have to get past the Padres. Uh, number 50, Luke McIver. Uh, slight mistake on uh, my reporting of the jersey number earlier. I said he was uh, number 34, but in fact, he is number 50. He is 12 years old. He's played one year in the majors, plays third base, left field, and right field, enjoys third base the most, and hits a grounder. Bare handed by the third baseman, but not in time. Everyone's going to reach. The Padres are on the board. Again, the Padres haven't put the ball to the outfield yet, but they get a run to, to uh, show. And it's Ryan Chase that comes in to score the game's first run off the grounder by Luke McIver. Now coming up, number 24, Will Jakes. Jakes, 11 years old, played one year in the majors, uh, plays pitcher, third base and outfield, enjoys pitching the most, and takes strike one there. His favorite highlight of the season was throwing out a Philly at home plate and when he's not playing baseball, he enjoys basketball, video games, and watching Boston sports teams. As this one's gonna get away from the catcher, it's a close play at the plate. Oh, it's caught up in the foot of the official, but the runners retreated. Oh, but, wait, what's happening? Was the was it blown dead or something? No, I think everyone just returned to the base. Okay, it yeah. looks like they might have had a chance to catch the runner retreating back to first. He was a little late to go back, but wild play. The uh, pitcher, Akiva Rosemarin, Fighting to get out of this first inning with two down and the bases loaded. Swing and a miss there. That's going to be strike two. One and two is the count now to Jakes. Runner at third is getting very aggressive, Jesse. He's going about halfway down the line. One nothing Padres here in the top of the first. And that one is fouled off. Jakes stays alive. Swing and a miss there, and Rosemarin escapes the jam with minimal damage, but the Padres do get on the board. Our score after the top of the first, the Padres won, and the Guardians about to take their first trip to the plate. I'll tell you, the pitcher did a great job. He was pumping, this, pumping, in, pumping in strikes. Uh, unfortunately, you know, a few balls uh, that should have been out didn't turn into it, but look, I think they'll take giving up one run despite all that. I mean, it certainly is a fair trade when you get the first two runners aboard. I mean, they always say when uh, the first runner gets on, your percentages of getting a run across right. increase dramatically. And not only did the Padres get a leadoff runner on, they got back-to-back -back leadoff runners on. And they did manage to get a run across. But... Uh, and I think uh, the big out, uh, when Mikey Sullivan got up, he's a league leader in most offensive sets. Uh, you know... Uh, Big cuts, uh, but Akiba got the best of them and struck him out. And I think it was a big out for this inning. Absolutely. Now taking the mound uh, for the Padres is uh, number 24, Will Jakes, uh, who just went down on strikes to end the top of the first. So he'll be hoping to take care of business on the defensive side alongside his teammates as the top of the Guardians order will be coming up. That will be Max Courier, Tycho Barden, and Akiva Rosemarin. So we're gonna see uh, both pitchers facing off against each other going both ways here in the first inning, guaranteed. Yeah, it should be an interesting matchup. One nothing, and uh, again, a little shaky defense, but like I was saying, definitely the Padres tend to have the offense, and the Gardens have the pitching, so it should be a great battle. Yep. And uh, you know, don't don't sleep on the credit that should be given to the Padres base runners for liking out all those infield plays. I mean, yes, a number of them were juggled, but you know, very briefly juggled, I would say. So you know, give, I would I would still give some credit to the base runners, even 100, if one hundred percent, even if in the box score it might go as an error, depending on what the stat keepers sure. decide. You know. I got one. And of course, also important to remember the conditions of the field. I mean, yesterday's weather was absolutely terrible. And there was some question about whether or not we'd be able to have this game. Give a lot of credit 
to uh, a lot of the coaches that came out here throughout the day to, you know, clean this field off, dry it out, make it as playable as it is right now. I mean, it's nothing, uh, uh, nothing short of a, uh, of a master class of field clearing work. Here we go, start at the bottom of the first. First pitch from Jakes is gonna be a high ball one to the Guardians number two, Max Courier. Courier is 11 years old. He's played two years in the majors, had one all-star appearance as he takes ball two. He's played shortstop, center field, first base, and pitcher, his favorite being shortstop. His favorite highlight of the season was turning a unassisted diving double play against the Dodgers to end a game. As he checks his swing there for ball three, good eye. Courier also plays for Boston Prime in club play. His hobbies when not playing baseball include playing trombone, playing Fortnite, playing other sports, and birding as he takes strike one. I can safely say I did not expect birding to be on the, on the hobbies list, but I respect it. I'm not sure what birding is, but. I imagine it's gotta be like bird watching, but with less syllables. <laughs> That one is outside, and Courier is going to draw a leadoff walk. So both teams get a leadoff runner on to start their first inning, and now coming up for the Guardians is going to be number five, Tycho Barden. Barden is 12 years old. He's played two years in the majors, made the all-star game both years. He plays catcher, shortstop, and center field, but enjoys catcher the most. Takes strike one there. His favorite highlight of the season, uh, completely laying out for a foul ball as a catcher. And his hobbies when not playing baseball, soccer, cooking dessert, camping, and frisbee. <laughs> Swing and a miss there for strike two to Barden. And I gotta say, I wish I could have seen the play where he laid out as a catcher, because I mean, that's gotta be so much harder, because catch is so much harder to move and all that. Oh, equipment. with all the equipment on for sure. It's a slow dribbler back to the pitcher, picked up by Jakes, thrown to first, and beats it out. Barden slides in safe for the infield hit. You know, we're, we're actually, seeing... I think oh. the field up was calling him out. Oh, it was overturned, you're right. You're right, so the 1-3 ground out for Barden does move Courier into scoring position at second as it looks at like the officials gonna confer over the call here. Home plate ump and the, imp and the infield ump discussing, but ultimately they do stick with the decision of an out. So it'll be one down with a runner at second as up comes number nine, Akiva Rosemarin. Rosemarin, we saw him get out of the jam in the top of the first as the Guardians pitcher. He's 12 years old, he's played one year in the majors, uh, made an all-star appearance in that year. Takes the first pitch outside for ball one. He's played pitcher, shortstop, and center field, enjoys pitcher the most. His favorite highlight of the season is the whole season. His hobbies when not playing baseball include playing guitar and drums, biking as he fouls off that pitch for strike one. So playing guitar and drums, biking, go-karting, traveling with family, and going to baseball games. Sounds How's that like for a flavorful <laughs> list of hobbies? Takes strike two there, so a one and two count here to Rosemarin. I realize how boring my life is, Jesse, when I see all these activities. I know, you missed the days when you were a kid and you had the time <laughs> and the energy to do all that, as that one sails in high for ball two. Blue. Lead Blue. runner Courier over at second. Uh, we see taking a few steps off the bag anytime the pitch is out of the zone. Might potentially get away from uh, from the catcher, but so far Sullivan doing a good job. As this one is lifted out to center field over the center fielder's head. This will go for extra basis. Rosemarin racing down to second. In comes Courier. This ball game is tied at one. Akiva Rosemarin adding to his own cause with the RBI double to center. I'll tell you, that out right before in that close play was a huge out. That's true. Might have saved a run there with that big hit from Rosemarin. Now coming up for the Guardians, number 13, Kramer Toto. First pitch misses for ball one. 
Toto uh, is 12 years old. He's played two years in the majors, made an all-star appearance both times. He plays first base, second base, shortstop, center field, and pitcher as he takes a ball there for a ball two. Uh, his favorite position is shortstop. His highlight of the season is hitting his first home run over the fence. And when not playing baseball, he enjoys playing flag football, working as an umpire for BYB, and playing wiffle ball. Big swing and a miss there for strike one. How about that? A, ki a kid involved in baseball is both a player and an umpire, it's a, Yeah, and Brooklyn Youth Baseball has a great program, as everyone may know, where they actually train, and actually, and even better, they, the kids can make a little bit of money. Absolutely, and you know, we need all the umpires we need at all levels of the game. That is true. They let this game happen. Three and one, I believe, is the count. And that one's gonna miss for ball four. Second walk at the inning for Jakes. And that will put runners at first and second. Does create a bit of a force here with one out. And a tied 1-1 ball game as up for the Guardians comes number seven, Mason Vaux. First pitch gets away from the catcher. Both runners are going to advance on the wild pitch. That puts Rose Marin at third and Toto at second, and that eliminates the force at all bases. Yeah, it was great base running. The base runner got a secondary lead, saw the pass ball, and took third easily. That's going to be a high ball two to Vo. Vo is 10 years old. This is his first year in the majors. He's played shortstop in center field, enjoys shortstop the most. His favorite highlight of the season is going to the World Series. And that's another miss. Runners racing home. This is going to be close. And he's tagged out. Sullivan got him. That was an amazing play. The ball went to the fence. Uh, the catcher grabbed it and unassisted tag at home. Really impressive. So Rose Marin out at home for the second out. Toto advances to third. Two down, runner at third with a three and O count to Toto. Toto plays uh, club ball for Boston. Oh, for Mason Vo. excuse me. I'm a batter behind. I'm so silly. That's, uh, that's on me as uh, Vo takes strike one. Three and one, the count to Vo. Two down, runner at third. Vo plays for Boston Prime 10 and under and also uh, plays for Watertown in club ball. His hobbies when not playing baseball uh, as he takes ball four. Uh, his hobbies are playing golf, uh, playing basketball, playing Rubik's Cube, and playing PS5. <laughs> so a meeting now at the mound with Will Jakes and the entire infield plus the coach. He has issued three walks so far this inning. One run has come in, but there are two outs thanks to the hustle from Mikey Sullivan behind the plate on that wild pitch that could have potentially brought in the go-ahead run. Yeah, the catcher is really keeping this game close right now in a 1-1 tie. It's first and third, two outs. Um, I'm going to make an assumption, Jesse, that the runner's going to go. There's certainly a good chance of that in this situation as due up for the Guardians will be number 34, Shua Kashno. Kashno, 12 years old, first year in the majors, made one all-star appearance. He's played uh, pitcher in first and enjoys pitcher the most. Uh, his favorite highlight of the season, a home run in his first at bat in the Padres game. His club team is the 12 and under Williamsport team. First pitch low for ball one, and indeed Vo takes off for second, and they just let him take it. So yeah, that puts it, it, It'd be a high risk play to throw it down with the runner at third. Absolutely. When not playing baseball, uh, Kashno, who takes strike one there on the outside corner. He enjoys playing basketball, collecting baseball cards, and practicing pitching with his father and brothers. And once again, a happy Father's Day to all. Big swing and a miss for strike two to Kashno. That is a one and two count. Runners at second and third, two down. Game tied at one apiece. Swing and a miss. Jakes escapes the jam. And after one, we are all tied up. Padres one, uh, Guardians one. 
And after the end of the inning, we're going to take a break, but we will be right back. You're watching ASPN HD. Victor deployed for the first time to Afghanistan in 2003. At four in the morning, my phone rang. They said, I regret to inform you that your husband was wounded in action. Victor sustained a moderate traumatic brain injury. I was doing school full time, and I was also then caring for Victor. One of the most important elements of caregiving is taking care of yourself. I just didn't want to forget that I also had goals and that I also had a life. What I did is I challenged Victor to meet me halfway. He asked all his therapists to help him undertake some of the house chores. There are almost six million military and veteran caregivers across the nation. We have our own journey and we can fulfill that journey at the same time that we are helping our loved one. Visit aarp.org caregiving for a free military veterans guide to navigate your caregiving journey. Welcome back to Elliott Field in Brookline, Massachusetts for ASPN HD. I am Jesse Mayfield Sheehan alongside Craig Chin. We're about to start the second inning of the 2023 Brookline Youth Baseball Major A Town Championship between the Guardians and the Padres, all tied at one after the first inning. Padres coming back up for the top of the second. Leading off for them is going to be number 11, Holden Ben as Akiva Rosemarin, following his game-tying RBI double, returns to the mound for the Guardians. Last inning, uh, Jake's had three walks, uh, second and third, two outs, but, you know, stayed true to his form and struck out the, a key batter to keep it a 1-1 tie. Absolutely. We saw some clutch uh, jam escaping from both pitchers as they both faced a lot of base runners in that first inning but both kept their cool and kept the damage to a minimum, and so here we are with a 1-1 tie. Leading off for the Padres this inning will be number 11, Holden Ben. Ben is 11 years old. This is his first year in the majors. He plays third, second, right field, and left field, enjoys third base the most. His favorite highlight of the season so far, winning the game to go to the championships. He plays for uh, Brookline's club team, and his hobbies when not playing baseball include video games, basketball, and football. Rose Marin, the first pitch of the inning. Swing and a miss for strike one. Rose Marin had two big strikeouts in the top of the first inning. See how he handles the second. And it's strike two. Rosemary's dealing, I gotta tell ya. Th mostly strikes, only a few balls here and there. Oh, and two, the count to Ben. And almost called strike three w there for a second, it looked like, which would have given Ben the chance to race down to first as it skipped away from the catcher temporarily, but it was called a ball. So simply one and two the count. And he lifts this one. It's gonna stay in the infield, shortstop under it, and he's got it for out number one. That one snagged out of the air by the shortstop, Mason Vaux. Yeah, I don't think the shortstop even had to move uh, maybe one step to his left. Next up for the Padres will be number seven, Bobby Beeston. Beeston, 10 years old, his first year in the majors, plays catcher, second base and left, his favorite position being catcher. And he hits a first pitch, and it's snagged by Rose Marin and thrown to first for out number two. That was a great defensive play right there by the pitcher. Now coming up for the Padres, with two down and the base is empty, number 99, Richie Allen. First pitch is fouled off for strike one. 
Allen, 12 years old. It's his first year in the majors. He plays four different positions, but enjoys pitcher the most. His favorite highlight of the season was when he got to pitch. And when he's not playing baseball, he enjoys fishing and woodworking. I love all the unique hobbies we're getting to hear all throughout this game. That one is some high chin music there. Although for, birding uh, was still my favorite of the ones you've mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> you think you might take up birding after this game, I Craig? May, I'll have to look into it. That one's another high, high ball, I believe. So it's two and one, the count. Swing and a miss there. Count now two and two. Two down, base is empty here in the top of the second. It's all twos across the board. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on the inning count. Two total runs between these two teams. And there's a grounder going up the first baseline. It is picked up, flipped to Rose Marin at first. And the 3-1 ground out is going to take care of business there. Well fielded by Cashno at first. Rosemary did it with his arm, he did it with his glove as well. That was a really clean inning for the Guardians. Indeed, uh, the, gar uh, the uh, Padres make contact, all three at bats, but I mean, you talked about it, Craig. Uh, Rosemary has just been pitching strike after strike after he strike. Has. He's trusting in the fielders behind him despite the struggles they had in the first inning. You know, I would say two or three fielding errors in that first inning, but Rosemary never gave up on the guys behind him. Yeah, and I think it's location strong too, other than obviously throwing a strike, they're not making clean contact. As you can see, the ball's not leaving the infield. So definitely trusting on his teammates, as you mentioned. Will Jakes now returns to the mound for the Padres in the bottom of the second after a brief break following uh, that uh, brief scare in the bottom of the first. One run was given up on the RBI double by Rosemary in the bottom of the first. And runners got as far as second and third and one almost came home on a wild pitch but was tagged out. Now due up for the Guardians in the bottom of the second will be Hodgson, Kutka, and Block. So it'll be interesting to see, because we talked about uh, Rosemary and throwing a lot of strikes. Jay Aix was uh, having a little trouble with his control in the first inning, issued three total walks. Craig, if you're a coach in this situation, what are you trying to say to this kid as he comes back out for a second inning? I mean, this is a championship game. The last thing you want to do is put more stress on him, right? Uh, there's a reason why you're, he's pitching, and there's a reason why they're at this game. So it's all about, you know, having him be comfortable. And a lot of times it's, you know, the catcher plays a big role in that as well. And, uh, you know, we know what Mikey Sullivan can do with the bat. And But so far catching, we already seen an amazing play where he actually got the ball off the backstop and stopped the runner from scoring. So he's got to realize he's got his teammates are behind him. All right, sounds like we're about to get this one started. Leading off for the Guardians will be number 24, Hayden Hodgson. Hodgson, uh, Hodson, uh, Hodgson, 11 years old. It's his first year in the majors. He's played pitcher, third base, shortstop, center field, right field, and second base, but enjoys second the most. His favorite highlight of the season was a walk-off single in the bottom of the sixth against the Phillies in uh, game 11, I believe. And when not playing baseball, he enjoys playing with Legos, listening to the radio and the news, playing ba basketball and riding his bike, as that one very quickly snagged for out number one. The pitchers are putting on a defensive clinic right now. Great snag by Jakes on the hill there, as now coming up will be number eight, Shane Kutka, first pitch, lifts it out to center, and it's snagged around the shoestrings out in center by the Padres center fielder, Ryan Chase. That was a catch, Jesse. Now coming up for the Guardians, number 50, REA Block. 
First pitch in there for strike one. Block, 12 years old, first year in the majors, plays second, third, and left, enjoys second the most. His favorite highlight of the season was when he hit a double off of Bryce as he tips that one for strike two. Uh, his club team is Brookline, and when not playing baseball, he enjoys playing basketball and biking. And that's three straight strikes for Jakes, and both teams rebound nicely defensively in the second inning, Craig, and they put their uh, opponent down in order. Yeah, something happened. Uh, he, Will Jakes was just pumping it in there, and you saw the amazing defense in center field. He had that amazing catch there, and he three straight pitches, and uh, unfortunately, the batter went down looking. We are through two here. All tied at one for ASPN HD. This is the BYB Town Championship. Dear moms and dads, we know it's not always been easy, and it's been a lot of hard work. It's not worth trying. What you have achieved here today is going to help us and our futures. Tell me it's not worth it is why we are coming up on stage not to collect your diplomas. Everything I do, I do it for you. Mom, love you always. graduate, they graduate. Visit finishyourdiploma.org to find free and supportive adult education centers near you. Welcome back to Elliott Fields in Brookline, Massachusetts. Joined by Craig Chin, I am Jesse Mayfield Sheehan here for ASPN HD. Ready to bring you the third inning of the 2023 Brookline Youth Baseball Major A Division Town Championship between the Padres and the Guardians. All tied up at one apiece after two innings of this six inning game. And now uh, the Padres cycling around to the top of the order as Alex Rosemarin returns to the mound for the Guardians for his third inning of work. Leading off for the Padres will be number five, Cam Galula. Galula reached on an infield single his first time up as part of a lot of uh, infield reaches for the Guardians, but I think Galula liked his out pretty cleanly. This one fouled off for strike one. Let's see what kind of inning we got, Jesse. The first inning, we had a lot of runners and with the potential of a lot of, uh, a lot more runs. And then the second inning was very clean on both sides defensively. Indeed, both teams going down in order in that second inning as the pitchers, Rosemary and Jakes both locked in. We'll see how they follow up this time as that one's going to miss for a ball. So one and one, the count to Galula. And that one is fouled off the plate. Or uh, Catcher was trying to argue that it didn't go behind the plate, but uh, and there, it looks like they might discuss, but I, I, I it looked pretty fair to me. But again, I'm going to yeah, trust just, the umpires. Yeah, I'm just not sure if, like, when it touches the plate, does that count as foul? If it stays uh, on the plate, it's a fair ball. Oh. Fair ball. Yeah. And indeed, the appeal is granted, and so it'll be a two-three ground out for Galula. Good. Uh, Heads up play there by the Guardians catcher, uh, which I believe is uh, Tycho Barden. Now at the plate for the Padres, number nine, Ryan Chase. Swing and a miss for strike one. Chase, his last time up, uh, hit a grounder that bounced off the pitcher's glove, reached first and later came in to score what is so far the Padres' only run. Makes contact, but a little behind the pitch there for a foul ball. Oh, and to the count. Yeah, you can see for the fastball, batter time a little bit trouble catching up to it, but it's a good contact though. 
One down, base is empty here in the top of the third. And there's contact over the second baseman, gonna go into shallow center as Chase reaches on a, the bloop single there to put a runner on with one down. That was a great at bat. Uh, you know, the pitch he fouled off, he was a little bit late on, but he adjusted and that was a great hit right over the second baseman's head. Now coming up with a runner at first and one down, number eight, Dylan Farrell. Farrell grounded into a fielder's choice at third his last time up. This time hits a grounder, juggled by the third baseman and everyone's gonna reach. It was a tough play at third, took a bit of a weird hop. But yeah, that now, would've been a close play. That was a tough play, it wasn't a hard hit ball. Now with runners at first and second, and one out for the Padres. Number 13, Mikey Sullivan comes up. Sullivan went down on strikes his last time up. The Padres hoping for a big swing from him here. Takes strike one. And this is the reason why he's batting fourth. You got two runners on, and this is a situation that the Padres want right now. Sullivan, like you said, Craig, a uh, leader in a number of offensive uh, statistical categories this season. As he hits a hard one there over to the shortstop, fielded cleanly, and the 6-5 fielder's choice gets the lead runner. That was a nice play by the shortstop. Went to, the, went to his backhand and saw the immediate uh, force at third to get the lead runner. That was Max Courier, the third inning shortstop for the Guardians. And now with two down and runners at first and second, up comes number 22, Alex Ravener. First pitch misses, ball one. Ah, Alec Ravener, excuse me, as that one's gonna miss for ball two. I can tell you, Jesse, Alec is no slouch at the plate either. He's a fifth batter on the Padres, but he's also one of a league leader in several categories in BYB majors. 2-0. and oh. Just chase that one low for strike one. Again, much attention being paid to the runners. They've got Farrell at second and Sullivan at first with two down here in the top of the third. And this one's a grounder fielded by Rosemarin and thrown to first, and that will be out number three. Rosemarin escapes another jam in the third inning, and we are still tied at one apiece. You know, a couple of runners got on, but again, strong defense. And I, I tell you, the Mikey Sullivan hit was a hard hit ball, which I hate to say it, it kind of doomed him. If he hit it a little bit slower, you never know what could have happened. But again, you don't, you, you never want to tell your players to not hit it hard, so. Yeah. No, that is, that is kind of the unfortunate trade-off, you know, because sometimes if the grass is tall enough, the ball will just die on the grass if you hit a slow roller, and you can just leg it out, but you can't, like you said, you can't tell your players not to hit hard. That's exactly right. Otherwise, you might as well send up everyone just to lay down a bunt every single at bat. And to your point about all the coaches volunteering to clean up the field, you would think that with a sloppy field, the ball will be a little bit slower, but as you said, this field looks immaculate. Absolutely, and I mean, you heard the player introductions and the coach introductions, and you heard how a lot of the uh, coaches share last names with a lot of the players. A That's lot right. of these people are parents, you know, just, just like yourself, Craig. You are a parent of a, a couple of fine young athletes that have made their way through the Brookline system. Yeah, it's uh, great to be connected. So, you know, my, my daughter's graduating in high school now. My John. son's in, uh, finished his second year of college. And I remember being at this field with both of them, coaching them. Uh, they're two years apart, but um, they both uh, played baseball. My daughter mentioned switching softball, but yeah, a lot of fun memories. And uh, what more perfect day to be able to display and celebrate that bond between parents and children than a beautiful day out here on Father's Day. 
Will Jakes returns to the mound for the Padres for his third inning of work. He will be uh, facing Wiener, Abbott, and Vit uh, Vitello of the Guardians. Uh, the Guardians going 12 hitters strong here uh, in their lineup compared to uh, the Padres' 10 hitter lineup. I'll tell you, Jesse, having 10 versus 12 can be a big advantage just with the number of rotations and the, and the players that you're putting on, excuse me, putting on the field. But at the same time, it all depends on if you have the right 10, so. Exactly. I mean, that's part of the reason you put your best players at the top of the order is you want them to get as many chances at the plate right. as that's possible. Right. So. You know, it does stand to reason that with more players in the lineup, some of those top guys might not get as many uh, chances at the plate. But at the end of the at, a at the end of the day, this is little league. This is about giving kids a chance to play and a chance to have that's fun. That's right. That's right. Um, but also, like you said, it all depends on who uh, on whether you got the right ten or maybe in the case of the Guardians, the right twelve. That's right. And. Uh, one of those 12 stepping up to the plate will be 12-year-old uh, Noach Wiener. First pitch, swung on a miss, strike one. Wiener number three for the Guardians. He is 12 years old, first year in the majors. He plays third, second outfield and pitcher. Likes third the best. Swings and misses there for strike two. Down quickly 0-2. Uh, his favorite highlight of the season is getting better every time, uh, every time we play. His hobbies were not playing baseball, basketball, cooking, playing with friends, and family time as he takes ball one there. You're going to love hearing that from a kid, right? It's just about getting better. Absolutely. You know, that to me, that's, that's something a coach said, and that tells me the kid was listening. That's right. As that one is outside for ball two. Two and two, the count. And he tips that one into the catcher's glove, and it is secured for out number one. Yeah, Jake definitely, Jake's definitely found the rhythm here. That is two straight strikeouts for Jake's after a tough first inning where he issued three walks. He's now put down five straight batters. Now up for the Guardians, taking high ball one is number six, Ellie Abbott. Abbott, 11 years old, first year in the majors, plays second left field and his favorite position, shortstop, as he takes ball two there. His favorite highlight of the season so far has been winning every game of the playoffs. <laughs> uh, and his hobbies when not playing baseball, other sports. <laughs> the Guardians for sure is on a roll. Takes low ball three there, so Early hitters count here to Abbott. Swing and a miss there for strike one. Three and one the count. Swing and a miss there. Jake's fighting his way back to a full count. Payoff pitch upcoming. Swing and a miss. That was an amazing comeback. 3-0, it's tough. 3-0, it's tough to come back, but Jake's did it. And not just 3-0, but 3-0 against uh, one of the shorter players for the Guardians, so a smaller strike, strike zone, zone to work right. with. But good job by Jake's for his third consecutive strikeout. Now a two down in the base, is empty. Swinging and missing in strike one is number 11, Zach Vitulo. Vitulo, 11 years old, one year in the majors, plays third, catcher second and center field. His favorite position is third. Uh, his favorite highlight of the season, uh, uh, well, first off, he actually missed the first three quarters of the year with a broken left arm as he takes ball one there. But Vitulo's highlight of the season so far has been an opposite field, two strike hit against the Padres in the playoffs. His club- For the win, no less, yes. Exactly as he takes another ball there. His club team is Boston Prime, but he's moving to the Brookline Bandits next season. And when not playing baseball, he enjoys basketball and watching sports. 
Hits a grounder here. Fielded cleanly at second and thrown to first for out number three. Another clean inning, Jesse. We, we're, I think we're witnessing a pitcher's duel here. It is certainly starting to look that way. Craig Will fielded at second, uh, I believe, by Ryan Chase uh, and thrown to Alec Rabiner at first and the third inning. Through three, we're still tied at one apiece, and we'll be right back with the fourth inning after a quick break. I don't remember how it started. Oh. Our back and forth. Victory. Fumble. Repeat. It always came back. <laughs> Okay, here we go, throw it. <laughs> yeah. You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Nice. Hello and welcome back to Elliott Field in Brookline, Massachusetts for ASPN HD. I am Jesse Mayfield Chien here to bring you the top of the fourth inning of this 2023 Brookline Youth Baseball Major A Town Championship between the Guardians and Padres, tied at one apiece. First pitch fouled off. And I'm joined here by a special guest, uh, Holden Hodgson, uh, Commissioner of the Major A's, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so uh, pretty good game so far, I must say. These are, these are two balanced teams. They play good baseball. Uh, and, you know, it's going to be about who takes advantage of the, the opportunities the most, um, and they'll be hard to come by. Yep. And, uh, you know, we talked about it a little with Craig. You know, uh, what did you think of the efforts of everyone today to make this game playable after the harsh rains yesterday as that ball's in low for ball one? One and two is the count to Luke McIver. Uh, frankly, it's it's getting to be standard duty here to, to come and put the effort in, but, you know, knowing the importance of the game, there was extra consideration. You know, many of us are out here multiple times today evaluating the field, trying to figure out when and where the best time to act was, um, and we got it done. Um, big collaboration. We added the, these new bases here today, which is overdue, and so the features of this, this, this field probably haven't looked better. That one is hit. That's going to be a grounder. Tough play, but picked up by Rosemarin for out number one. Uh, the pitchers have really been uh, producing so far today. Uh, today, Holden, uh, what do you think of the uh, the hurlers so far today? As as I imagine, you must be a big fan of the game. Yeah, uh, it's it's a, a particular matchup here where we've seen the, pod, uh, the the Guardians and Padres have matched up quite a few times, and these pitchers are familiar, but still hard to hit. And so that means they're they're doing their job. The catchers also are doing their job. You know, receiving the ball. You know, I, I, there were fewer pass balls, you know, than on average, I think, in the early innings so far. And and on those, you know, there were some close plays at the plate, including, you know, like a put out that was, that was uh, you know, executed by the Padres, which is done nicely. That one's going to be fouled off for strike one by Will Jakes, as this is a pitcher against pitcher face-off here in the top of the fourth. Of course, the two of them faced off at the end of the first inning with Rose Marin uh, taking care of business for an inning-ending strikeout in that situation. Um, and uh, Holden, how, how have you felt about the, the season so far, uh, what you've seen from the, everything, the players, the coaches, to all the people who volunteer their time to make all this happen? Uh, you know, it, it's, it's odd. I'm, I'm coming in behind Craig Chen in the, in the color booth, but you know, he was the majors commissioner before me. I learned a lot from him and what to, to do to engineer a season. Uh, and, you know, frankly, we take a lot of pride in making this our, our best offering, you know, across Brookline baseball because this is where, you know, we're expecting the highest competition. And this year has been, you know, really wonderful to watch because it's, it's actually what happened. We had six great majors coaches draft six great teams. Uh, everyone's dealt with injuries uh, and, 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 you know, roster availability and, and load management to, to great results. And we had a great all-star game and home run derby. And then now we're in the playoffs, which has been, you know, great format we chose to do among all, all the coaches and player agents to do this double elimination format bracket so that. 
That's going to be a shallow fly ball into left, and that's going to drop. That's going to be a two-out single for number 11, Holden Ben. How about it, Holden? Rose Marin got Jake's on strikes before that for the second out of the inning, but now we've got a runner on first with two down as up comes number seven, Bobby Beeston. The major season has gone really well. The one thing we haven't seen, to my knowledge, is just absolute layout plays in the outfield. <laughs> Ryan Chase got, got got close in the in the other inning, you know, making that shoestring catch. Um, I think that's, you know, other than that, we've seen all the plays. We've you know, seen almost, you know, we've seen double plays. We've seen plays at the plate, excellent pitching, good hitting. Um, it's high level baseball, and we're happy with it. One and zero. Oh, the count to Beeston now with a runner at first. Hits a grounder over to third. Going to be a close play, but they beat him out. Great throw from the hot corner. Noah Wiener. Noah Wiener taking care of business from third. The long throw there, and that is going to end the top of the fourth. And that's not an easy play, Holden. We've no. seen a few plays over at third that uh, turned into uh, infield reaches, whether you call them a hit or an error. So that's, I mean, there's a reason they call it a hot corner. It's because, uh, yeah. not just because of how hard hit the balls are, but how hot your seat is whenever the ball comes your way. Well said, Jesse. Yeah, you got to make a good decision there. Um, maybe the play was at second, but he's counting on his, his arm to get the ball the first in time with that runner, and he got it. Uh, you know, a couple of those plays at third base, you know, maybe... You know, didn't didn't cost the the Guardians too much in this circumstance, but you know you can't keep doing that. You got to execute, and Noak did a good job there. So good for him. Um, so far, so good for the Padres on defense. They've looked great. Absolutely. And they're they're the Padres on Father's Day. I mean, is that is that then? I mean, I'm, I'm certain didn't someone he? picked up on that, but you know they're playing hey, with house money. I'll, I'll pick up on one more for you. You got the Padres and the legal Guardians. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> great. You, you just you guys just planned all this, didn't you? Well, it came together. Uh, it came together. Uh, it, it's, it's all rigged, folks. It's all a conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> they did it all for a bad pun. Right. So not not, not only do I you know, commission the the majors league, but the, the overall town town league, and uh, we saw this one coming. We we, we needed to have this. It's, yeah. Well, uh, after. Rose Marin completes his fourth inning of work. Jake's back on the mound for his fourth time against the Guardians hitters. And that's going to be a high ball one to the leadoff hitter, number two, Max Courier, as it will be the top of the Guardians order, Courier, Barden, and Rose Marin. And this one's a high hopper over the pitcher's head and juggled at third and might not have been able to beat him out to first anyway. It's a tough one, yeah. He's... he's an excellent base runner, incredible speed. He's trouble on the bases too, so um, that's a good start for the Guardians here to get one on Noel here with, with that one on the Max Courier. Yeah, no, we haven't seen too many deep balls uh, outside of uh, Rose Marin's RBI double back in the first. It's been a lot of, you know, can you beat out the infielders or are the infielders going to cleanly field their grounders has really been the deciding factor such far in what's really been a pitcher's duel. But yeah. that's a hard hit ball nice well play. grabbed at third. Yeah. Wow. What'd we say about the hot corner? Great, yeah, great, did a great job, job there. there. By, uh, I believe that is Holden Ben taking care of business for the Padres for the 5-3 out. Courier does advance to scoring position though. One out and a runner at second, which is the exact position that Alex Rosemarin, that Akiva Rosemarin, excuse me, that Akiva Rosemarin faced his last time up, and of course we know in that one he had an RBI double to center. Fouls off this first pitch for strike one. That was a great play at third base by Holden. We talked about Max's speed, there's no chance to get him at second on that. You have to go to th first and he controlled the ball and got a nice out. 0-1 oh the count, one down, runner at second, and this one's gonna come in high for ball one. Like I said before, Rose Marin got the double against Jakes back in the first. Jakes has gone down on strikes twice against Rose Marin. As this one misses to the outside. 
But of course, overall in the pitchers' competition, they've been playing even. Each gave up one run in a shaky first inning and then uh, settled in and have just been dealing ever since, although that one outside for ball three. Yeah, and should this go to the second to, you know, deciding game, uh, winner take all on Tuesday, you know, it, it figures that neither of these pitchers will be available, so there'll be some other, uh, you know, calculus for the coaches to deal with there. And Rose Marin will trot down to first, drawing the one out walk there. Coming up to the plate now, number 13, Kramer Toto. Toto, his last time up, he walked, got as far as third on a pair of wild pitches, but was left stranded. Takes an inside ball one. Kramer has the, the potential to really put a ride on the ball. He, he could potentially get it out of here if he, he connects. So let's, let's have a look at his swings. That one skips past the catcher. Runners are going to advance. And that puts two in scoring position with a 2-0 count to Toto. That's a high ball three. Jake's starting to struggle a bit with his control as it's a three and oh count to Toto. And that one's lifted out to Trouble. left. It's gonna drop Trouble. in front of the left fielder. They're trying to send in two. And two are gonna come in. A huge two run single from Kramer Toto. Holden, you called it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, good hitter, got good energy. That's one of the hardest hit balls we've seen so far today. Courier and Rosemarin both come across the plate and with our first scoring play since the first inning, the Guardians take the lead three to one. Two-time Majors All-Star Kramer Toto. Good to see him enjoying his 12-year-old year in the Majors. Now coming up, number seven, Mason Vo, as he takes strike one. Last time up, Vo drew, uh, drew a walk, stole second, but was left stranded. Misses that one for ball one. One and one, the count one out, and one runner on. That one misses out high and outside for ball two. And we got a pause for a shoelace tie. Yeah, safety first. These defenses are so well coached, you can see them setting up, they communicate to each other. The coaches well, don't have to say much to get them you know, alert and ready for the next play. Uh, you know, and again, notwithstanding some of the, the sloppy play in in some of the frames we've seen, like most of these teams are here because they play good defense and that's the result you get. So let's see how this goes. That one is in there for strike one. Nice pitch. And I'll, I'll tell you, Holden, I feel like for every, uh, you know, botched fielding play, I feel like we've seen two or three cleanly fielded plays or excellently fielded plays. You'd be right, yeah, good call. That one's gonna miss outside. I believe uh, it's a full count now to Mason Vo, with one down and a runner at second. Guardians leading the Padres three to one here in the bottom of the fourth. And that's gonna be a high ball four. So the Guardians starting to really string something together as up comes number 34, Shua Kashno, and this might be the end of the day for Jakes. He's done well, he, he's done what he's supposed to do. Good at him. So it looks like Jakes will leave the mound now, having pitched three and a third. You know, solid to strong innings, I would say, as he moves out to left field. You know, a little, a little shaky here in this inning, but he's done, like you said, about as much as you can ask of a starting pitcher at this level. Yep. Replacing him on the mound will be number five, Cam Galula. 
And now this will be interesting uh, situation for uh, Galula. One thing I found, Holden, is that these uh, lower amateur levels, being a relief pitcher is one of the hardest jobs there is because you don't have specialists out here. No. You know, and even at this uh, at this little league level, I mean, Galula was just out there and left. He wasn't warming up in the pen or anything. You're right. His warm up pitches he's getting are all he's getting. Uh, it's mindset over uh, over anything else at this point. He's got a job to do. He's a good pitcher. Yeah, and it, it, to me, a big question whenever I see a reliever come in at the amateur level, even as high as high school, is are they going to be able to find their rhythm and find the strike zone before things potentially get out of hand? Because when you come in as a reliever, it's such a tight window to get things done before things can really start to explode on you. Because a lot of times you're being brought in at a tough situation uh, that the starter needed to be pull, pulled from. Yeah, good life lessons to learn here on this baseball field, huh? Absolutely. So the first batter he'll be facing will be number 34, Shua Kashno. And his first pitch outside for ball one. Kashno went down on strikes to end the first inning his last time up. He's hoping to make something happen here with one down and runners at first and second. And he hits a hard grounder up the middle, skips oh, wow, past trouble. the second baseman. This is going to score at least one. And Kashno advances to second as they were busy worrying about the lead runners. In comes number 13, Kramer Toto, off the RBI single from Shua Kashno. That would have been a tough play to make out there. Just eke through. Yeah, it's always tough when you see a high bouncing ball that just like decides to just stop and roll past you. Right. This next pitch is outside for ball one. Who's this kid? As now up is number 24, Hayden Hodgson. Oh, I see what you did there. This one is high for ball two. I mean, Holden, how, how special has this got to be? We've talked. I talked with Craig before about how many you know coaches and uh, uh, lead people out here share last names with the mm. uh, players on the field. To be able to be out here uh, with the kids on Father's Day, just enjoying a nice day at the ballpark. Uh, it's special. I like it. Uh, I like being here in almost any circumstance, and today's no different. It's it's super nice. Uh, you know, high stakes. And we'll see how we get through it, right? I mean, team game, um, get through the lineup, see who can make the, the best plays. And if, it, if it's any one person's chance to see it, like hopefully all the parents get to enjoy uh, their time here, including their, you know, including the dads with their, their sons, so. It is now a full count to Hayden Hodgson. Mason Vo at third, Shua Kashno at second. One down here in the bottom of the fourth. Excuse me. And that is going to come in high for ball four as Hodgson loads the bases. Cam, let's go, let's go. Tough to take a pitch, you know, on, uh, with a full count, but uh, good job. I think it's a little easier when it starts coming in over your head, though. I suppose, I suppose, yeah. Now, first pitch to Shane Kutka is going to be fouled up the first base line. Bases loaded, one out. The Guardians lead the Padres four to one after the two runs single from Toto and the RBI single from Kashno. And Kutka, foul pop up, could not be chased down by the catcher, and that's going to be strike two. Kutka. Kutka, his last time up, he flew out to center. That was that great shoestring catch. Oh, great catch. By Chase out in center field. Now facing an 0 and 2 count. That one in the dirt, but well blocked by the catcher. That'll be ball one. Still Mikey Sullivan behind the backstop for the Padres. As that one gets away from him, but the runners hesitate and will stay back. That'll be ball two for a 2-2 two -two count. 
if I'm not mistaken. I think the third base coach is reluctant to send runners uh, given that last put out of the uh, attempted stolen home base on the drop uh, on the pass ball. So, you know, they're taking it seriously. They got a good catcher behind the plate here. Got to contend with that. It's true. Sullivan did recover a wild pitch in the first inning to tag a runner out at home. Swing and a miss, and Kutka goes down on strikes. Big strikeout for Galula, who almost lost track of it on the throwback, but uh, it didn't bounce far enough away. I, I have seen a run score on a failed uh, exchange back to the pitcher before, yeah. even as high as the high school level. Yeah. You got you to you be careful. Now with two down, and the base is still juiced. Up comes number 50, REA Block. First pitch skips past the catcher, but a hard ricochet off the backstop. No way they were going to let the runners go. Yeah, that field prep actually did its job. This 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 field is uh, in fine shape. The balls are bouncing right back. Absolutely. I, I saw a photo of like the huge puddle that uh, was between first and second before you guys got to work on it. And if fans look at the field when a ball is hit, uh, you'll see like the huge dark spot uh, on that spot between first and second where uh, a puddle had previously accumulated. I think you can see one in the slight divot uh, at the front of the pitcher's dirt as that's a swing and a miss for strike two to block. One and two, the count to him. Yeah, again, just a, a big thanks to all the volunteers who came out from all the, the, the baseball divisions um, and did a lot of work there. And that's a swing and a miss, and that will be two big strikeouts for Galula to put an end to the inning, but the Guardians do jump out to a 4-1 to one lead at the end of four. Holton Hodgson, uh, Hodgson, thank you so much for joining us here today. It's my pleasure. You guys do great work. Thanks for broadcasting thank the game. All right, through four, the Guardians four, the Padres one. We will be right back after this. Man, it's lonely. Like, going through life lonely. There is the therapeutic aspect of music, just expressing how you feel. I'm going to talk to Howie about his feelings, make it into a song. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. What about those barbecues you plan in detail for your family? Or your daughter's first costume party? It was out of this world. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Prepare an emergency kit and make a family communications plan. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. Back at Elliott Field, this is ASPN HD, bring you live coverage of the 2023 Brookline Youth Baseball Major A Division Town Championship. Hello, I am Jesse Mayfield Chin, joined once again by Craig Chin. Thank you again to Holden Hodgson for joining us in that fourth inning. And what a fourth inning it was as the Guardians break the pitcher's duel and jump out to a four to one lead. Now returning to the mound with a lead for the Guardians is Akiva Rosemarin, and his first pitch fouled off by number 99, Richie Allen. The game's flying by, Jesse. I take a half inning off, and all the action happens. I mean, that's the thing, uh, Craig. You took a full inning off. I, that's, that's right. I did. Time flies when you're having fun on a baseball field. And that pitch is going to be a ball. I, th I think it might have hit Allen's shoes, but because he stepped back, they didn't count it as a hit by pitch. Yep, he's staying in the box, so. So it'll be Allen, Galula, and Chase do up for the Padres as they've now got a deficit to battle back from as that one is going to be high for ball two. Two and one, the count to Allen. Allen grounded out to first to end the second inning his last time up. As this one comes in low for ball three, a three and one count. Not a lot of time left, Jesse, chasing three runs. The dugout bringing the noise for the Padres here in the top of the fifth, and that's going to be ball four. A leadoff walk for Richie Allen. And now with a leadoff runner on, we cycle back to the top of the order. 
as the young man who came in as a relief pitcher in the last half inning now comes up to the plate. It is number five, Cam Galula. This will be Galula's third time in the box today. He grounded out in that weird ground out to the catcher his last time up. He's one for two and he fouls that one off for strike one. That one of course was a uh, heads up play by the Guardians backstop man, their own number five, Tycho Barden, who uh, last time Galula was up made a very heads up play after it bounced off home plate but stayed in fair territory. Yeah, I mean, you know, as a coach, you definitely want your players to keep playing. That's a great hit, opposite field. Speaking of keeping on playing, Galula keeps on swinging and drops that one out and left for his second hit of the day. And now runners at first and second. And in terms of the game situation, the tying run is now at the plate with two yeah, runners on. Chasing three runs. You don't want to run, you don't want to make the first out on the bases for sure. Akiva Rosemarin has made a valiant effort throughout the day on the mound for the Guardians. But you have to wonder with this now being the fifth inning, at what point they might make a pitching change as we take a pause so the center fielder can uh, tie his laces. And as you may know, or as for those listening, there is a pitch limit as a rule that Little League creates, and it's an 85 pitch limit. It's true, I mean, the Guardians in their prepared roster for the day, they had Rosemarin only pitching the first four innings, but he's worked so efficiently so far today that they're keeping him out there for the fifth as he throws ball one to Chase there. Chase his last time up, hit a single, and before that, uh, reached on an E1, takes strike one there. Chase, of course, came across the plate in the first inning for what has been the Padres' only run so far today. And he hits a dribbler, that's gonna drop in fair territory. And tagging third was Kutka for the unassisted fielder's choice for out number one. So Allen out at third, Galula advances to second, Chase reaches first, and now up to the plate is number eight, Dylan Farrell. Another hard grounder, but this one foul of the third baseline for strike one. Farrell, his last time up, reached on an E5, and before that, uh, grounded into a fielder's choice. Lifts this one into the outfield, and it's gonna drop in. Runner's gonna have to race to second, slides in, and the throw was wide. Everyone reaches safely. And Jesse, guess who's up? It is the catcher, number 13, Mikey Sullivan. One of the strongest regular season hitters in the league, led in a number of categories, including I believe batting average, on base percentage, and I think doubles as well. As the officials confer, possibly keeping an eye on the pitch count for Rosemarin. Sullivan, uh, so far today, he has struck out and grounded out into a fielder's choice. We just saw Farrell send his first ball to the outfield to single and load the bases. And a timeout is being called by the Guardians. As the coach and catcher come out, this might be the end of the day for Rosemarin. He's had a very strong day so far, but it's uh, it's been a tough inning here in the fifth. One out, bases loaded. But they're gonna stick with him. Tough situation here. Not just a hit, but a walk or a hit by pitch. 
could bring in a run. First pitch low and inside for ball one. Well, the RBI leader for the major league is up at the plate, and he's got the, the two RBI the leaders are at the plate and on deck. That's right. As Alec Rabiner was tied for the regular season lead with Sullivan, 16 RBI each. As Sullivan took strike one on that pitch, one and one the count. And a big swing fouls that one over the backstop. And it's a one and two count to Sullivan. This is a big at bat right now, Jesse. High pressure situation for both pitcher and hitter. And a hard hit foul ball by Sullivan. As he goes foul up the third base line, count remains one and two. He was just a little out in front of that one. And that one comes in low and inside for ball two. Two and two, the count to Sullivan. One out, bases loaded here in the top of the fifth. Guardians lead four to one. Big swing, that one's fair, skips past. No, it stays around the foot of the third baseman and Chase slides in safe as Galula comes in to score. Again, another hard hit ball right at the third baseman, but that was a tough Tough ball to handle right there. And it looks like uh, Kutka just kind of lost it around his feet. I mean, that's always so tough when that happens. Usually you see that happening to catchers. Exactly, right. Uh, after a wild pitch or something, it just gets tangled up in the shoes there, and you're, you're looking all around without realizing it's you know directly beneath you. And the third baseman might have thought it went got behind him as well. Yeah. Galula scores, base is still loaded. Now up comes the other League leader in RBI, number 22, Alec Rabiner, as he swings and misses for strike one. Rabiner, his last time up, grounded out to the pitcher to end the third inning. Before that, reached on an E4 back in the first. Hits a grounder there over to short. They're going to throw home in time. Chase was arguing that one a bit, but he does get a big second out there on the 6-2 fielder's choice. Shortstop got the ball, and you can tell he was thinking going to first or second, but that was a gutsy call, and it worked out. Tycho Barden, a good job at catcher covering the plate there. And of course, the shortstop Mason Vo taking care of the batted ball. So base is still loaded, but now two down, four to two the score at the plate. And hitting one, caught by Vo. He retires Luke MacGyver for the third and final out of the inning. Mason Vo taking care of business at perhaps the most important position on the field at shortstop and two big outs to end the inning. Two key plays. I mean, the second out was to stop a run from being scored and obviously that catch there to end the inning. So we are through four and a half here at Elliott Field. The score as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning, the Guardians four, the Padres two. And remember, if the Guardians do that, pull out the win don't here, do do as the Padres have already lost once in this no double problem. elimination I tournament, the Padres will be eliminated and the Guardians will be crowned town to champions. To if the Padres win, we will advance to a rubber match on Tuesday. But in order to do that, the Padres are gonna need to produce some runs and they've only got three outs left to work with, Craig. It'll be an exciting finish here. But first, the Padres have to take care of Brinson to keep the game close. Then they have three more outs to try to cover the difference. Absolutely. It's going to be Wiener, Abbott, and Vitulo. 
do up at the plate as Cam Galula returns to the hill for the Padres. Galula came up in a very tough situation last inning. First batter he faced hit an RBI single up the middle. And then after, but then after a walk, Galula stood tall with back-to-back -back strikeouts to get out of the inning with minimal damage. His team currently trails by two and he doesn't want that deficit getting any bigger before they get their last chance at the plate. And of course it was Galula that uh, came home for the Padres' second run off that hard hit ball by Mikey Sullivan. It's been a thrilling game so far. Craig, if you're if you're a coach in either situation, Padres or Guardians, what are you telling your team right now? Yeah, right now, I mean, if I'm the Padres coach right now, you know, you're not trying to put pressure on them again. You're down by two, but you get a, there's, again, there's a reason why you're in the championship game. You're facing the 10, 11, 12 batters, and I'm sure in, look, the 10, 11, 12 batters are, are great batters if they're playing the majors, but at the same time, you're gonna have to do, our, do your job, right? And the best thing you can do as a pitcher, throw strikes and let your, let your uh, teammates help you. Now coming up to the plate, leading off for the Guardians, number three, Noak Wiener. First pitch is gonna be a high ball one. Wiener his uh, last time up. He struck out to lead off the third. Swings and misses there for strike one. Had a very nice play at the hot corner. Uh, back uh, in I believe the fourth inning. As he hits one here right at the shortstop, fields it cleanly, thrown to first. 6-3, ground out to start the inning. Well fielded at short by Dylan Farrell. It was good contact by Wiener. Uh, if you notice what the shortstop did, he didn't charge it, he played it on the bounce, and that was a perfect throw. One down. One down, and now up comes number six, Ellie Abbott, as he takes an outside ball one. Abbott, his last time up. He struck out as he takes one on the outside corner for strike one there. That one's a high ball too. I believe uh, Abbott worked his way to a 3-0 count his last time up, but then three straight strikes from Jake's put him down. And he'll now face a three and one count. Let's see if it's gonna be the same thing. Swing and a miss there, and it is a full count once again to Ellie Abbott. And swings and misses and goes down on strikes. Two down, bases empty. And now up comes number 11, Zach Vitulo. Vitulo, his last time up, grinded out to second. Swing and a miss there for strike one. And there's a grounder fielded well by Galula on the mound for an easy 1-3 ground out to end the inning. Well, if, I, if you're on the Padres bench, couldn't have hoped for anything different, right? Padres take care of the batters in order, but they still trail the Guardians 4-2 as we get ready to head into the final inning of regulation. Through five, the score, Guardians four, Padres two. We'll be back with the sixth right after this.
us some frozen yogurt tonight? Maybe another time. Thanks, though. Hey, Charles, how do you like your burger? Ooh, well done, I hope. <sighs> I love this tree. Hey, honey. We thought we'd try something new. Family art hour. Come on, sit down. OK, guys, what do you think? <laughs> that is you. Oh, you got jokes. You're funny. That is you. And that is your son and your other son. Learn about adopting a teen from foster care. You can't imagine the reward. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. Back here at Elliott Field in Brookline, Massachusetts for ASPN HD. I am Jesse Mayfield Sheehan, joined by Craig Chin here for what could be the final frame of the 2023 Brookline Youth Baseball Major A Division Town Championship. Here in the top of the sixth inning, the Guardians lead the Padres 4 to 2. And if the Guardians take care of business here, they will seal and win the town championship. And on the mound to try and close things out for the Guardians is number two, Max Courier. Yeah, it's coming into a safe situation, uh, trying to preserve a two-run lead. Right now, the pressure's on the Padres. And the first to face that pressure will be number 24, Will Jakes. First pitch swung on and missed for strike one. Jakes went down on strikes back in the top of the fourth, and he also went down on strikes to end the top of the first. And swings on that one for strike two. Both of those previous at-bats were against the Guardians starting pitcher, Akiva Rosemarin, who is currently the pitcher on credit for the win if there is no lead change the rest of the way. Jakes would be the pitcher on credit for the loss for the Padres as he now faces a one and two count. Swing and a miss, and Jakes goes down on strikes. One down. Nope, Curry is not fooling around here. He threw four pitches, three of them for strikes, so. Now coming up for the Padres is number 11, Holden Ben. Ben with a hard shot, and that's fair in right field. And Ben is going to have his second consecutive single. The Padres not going down without a fight. He really turned on that ball. That was a line shot. Yeah, if that hadn't died on the grass, that could have uh, potentially bounced all the way to the wall, might have gone for extra bases. But instead, it will be a one-out single, putting a runner at first. As for the Padres now, up comes number seven, Bobby Beeston. First pitch misses for ball one. Beeston, his last time up, grounded out to third to end the fourth as he fouls that one off for strike one. One and one is now the count. Tying run at the plate here in the sixth. And it hits him. Oh, that one hurt. Oh, man. The young man is back on his feet, and he is trotting down to first himself. They're going to have to drag him off this diamond, Craig, as he, he took that one right in the ribs. He did, and I could, I could hear that thud Tim, from where we're sitting. With a hit by pitch, two runners now on with one out for the Padres. And 
honestly, the one the one person I hope doesn't take that too personally is Courier. That that was a complete accident. You know, you could tell he yeah. was a little shaken up by that. There's definitely no team. intent in that pitch at all. Yeah, even then with an accident, it's hard not to feel guilty when you see a kid go down like that. But Courier also came by uh, as he was running up the first baseline to see if he's okay. First pitch to Richie Allen is in the dirt, but well covered by Tycho Barden. We've seen some really strong play from both catchers. Barden for the Guardians, Sullivan for the Padres. Uh, in the box for the Padres, number 99, Richie Allen, with runners at first and second and one down. As he takes strike one there, one and one, now the count. So Courier bouncing right back to hit the strike zone. That one's in the dirt, skips past Barden. The runners hold as it does not skip that far. Again, chasing two runs, not a big secondary lead for the runners, but at the same time, you don't want to take too big of a risk. Two and one, the count. That one catches the outside corner for strike two. Courier fighting to get that second out. That one misses outside, and it's a full count to Allen. Tying run is on first. The Padres two runs away from tying this up and keeping it going. The Guardians two outs away from a championship. Payoff pitch upcoming. And it hits the zone for strike three. That was a big pitch, Jesse. First and second, tying run at first. And now with two outs, the Padres down to their last hope and it will be number five, Cam Galula. Galula. He's put in a strong relief effort on the mound, and he's scored the team's most recent run back in the fifth inning. That made it four to two, and now he's hoping to close that gap even further. He's got Ben at second, Beeston at first. First pitch in there for strike one. Again with a 10, 10 person roster, this is the advantage you have. You have your leadoff batter getting up for the fourth time. That one's gonna miss outside. One and one the count. Lula, his last time up, he singled and later scored. Before that, grounded out to the catcher and before that singled again. He's two for three so far as he fouls that one off for strike two. One and two the count. The Padres down to their final strike. And he stays alive. We are not done here, folks. Padres do still have the tying runs on the base paths. The Guardians maybe one strike away, but the Padres one really big swing away from changing the dynamic of this game entirely. Yeah, Galula's fouled off a couple of tough pitches right there. And he fouls off another. Might have chased the ball, but with two strikes, you got to protect the zone, right? Yep, the old swing at everything strategy. And Galula continues to battle. And he hits that one into the field. It skips past the shortstop. And everyone reaches. This game is not over. Again, put the ball in play, right? And then run fast. Just took a weird hop past the shortstop. Yeah, tough play for the shortstop. Took a bad hop right at the end. The shortstop had it lined up. And now with the bases loaded, the tying run at second, the go ahead run at first, and two down. Up comes number nine, Ryan Chase. Oh, 
Chase, his last time up grounded out into a field, uh, grounded into a fielder's choice and was later thrown out at home on a different fielder's choice. He's hoping for a big one here. Checks his swing and it's a high ball one. A walk here would make it a one run ball game. So Courier has got to be careful. Again, you have your three hitter and four hitter coming up behind you, so you don't want to chase. And that one is in there for strike one. One and one the count. That one is low for ball two. Two and one the count. Ben at third, Beeston at second, Galula at first. Chase at the plate. That one catches the corner for strike two. Two and two the count. Once again, one strike away for the Guardians, but still one big swing away for the Padres. Let's see what happens. And that one sails high. The runners hold as it gets away from the catcher, but this will be a full count. Yep, runner staying, staying at the base. Again, don't want to take a chance. You're, you need two runs, not just one. Full count, two outs, base is loaded. The town championship on the line. Are you not entertained? And it's ball four. In comes Ben, and it's a one-run ball game. Ryan Chase with eyes of an eagle and nerves of steel. I'm sure coaches, players, parents are all a little bit nervous, but I got to tell you, this is a lot of fun right now. I, I, even I got nervous. <laughs> I got no horse in this race, and even I was biting my teeth there. Now with the bases loaded, the tying run at third. Up comes number eight, Dylan Farrell. First pitch in there for a strike. So Jesse with the tying run at third, if I was the Padres, I, and it looks, you know, you have a fast run at third, you might want to look to get a, get a run on a pass ball. Bobby Beeston, the runner at third, as Farrell fouls this one off. Very quickly behind, 0-2. Third straight batter to be down to their final strike. Courier trying to finish the job. The Padres trying to finish the comeback. Hits it, grounder to short, fielded by Vo. He's racing to second, flips it. Guardians win the World Series! That was a beautiful play by the short. This is a well played game, Jesse. The pitching, the defense. A valiant comeback attempt by the Padres, but they fall one run short, and by an identical score to their previous matchup, the Guardians secure the win, four to three. Mason Vo fields it at short and flips it to Zach Vitulo at second for the game-ending fielder's choice, and Max Courier, after seeing the final out slip through his fingers twice, finally gets the monkey off his back, collects the save, and wins the championship for the Guardians. You know, Mason made an error that was a uh, tough play just a few plays before, so that's got to felt really good. He, and the great thing about it, he started running towards second, then made the throw as he saw the runner closing in on the base. What a fantastic game between these two teams. My hat's off to both of them, Craig. What a phenomenal ball game. Four to three, the final score. Of course, both teams put a run on in the first inning as both pitchers shook off some really difficult jams and then started to settle in for a bit of a pitcher's duel between the starters, Akiva Rosemarin and Will Jakes, as they both pitched very well today. Um, finally, uh, the floodgates broke open a little bit for the Guardians in the bottom of the fourth. A big two-run single by Kramer Toto provided the go-ahead scores and then a much needed insurance run off an RBI signal, uh, single by Shua Kashno. The Padres managed to chip away at the lead a bit, but they ultimately fell one run short. We'll be back 
with the final wrap up after a break. Stay tuned. There are a lot of words I would use to describe my daughter. Kind, strong, hilarious. When I think about how much she's experienced in her life on a journey that we're now on together as a family, We can't help but be inspired by her every day. Hey, Mom, we're about to start the movie. Oh, yeah, I'll be right there. Okay. So really, we are the lucky ones. Learn about adopting a teen from foster care. You can't imagine the reward. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. Victor deployed for the first time to Afghanistan in 2003. At four in the morning, my phone rang. They said, I regret to inform you that your husband was wounded in action. Victor sustained a moderate traumatic brain injury. I was doing school full time, and I was also then caring for Victor. One of the most important elements of caregiving is taking care of yourself. I just didn't want to forget that I also had goals and that I also had a life. What I did is I challenged Victor to meet me halfway. He asked all his therapists to help him undertake some of the house chores. There are almost six million military and veteran caregivers across the nation. We have our own journey, and we can fulfill that journey at the same time that we are helping our loved one. Visit aarp.org caregiving for a free military veteran's guide to navigate your caregiving journey. Welcome back to Elliott Field in Brookline, Massachusetts, where we just wrapped up the 2023 Brookline Youth Baseball Major A Town Championship. Now we toss it over to League Commissioner Holden Hodgson for the awards ceremony. Thanks, Jesse. And thanks to all of Brookline and BYB. Let's hear it for both teams today in our Majors Championship. A second close game between this well-matched teams Great baseball, great sportsmanship, great result for the town of Brookline overall. Uh, as a majors commissioner and, and BYB chair, I just am so happy that we get to finish our season on a beautiful day like this with, with its, the crowd looking like it does. And just knowing there's always more baseball right behind this for whoever wants to keep playing. But this is a great, great moment in time for both sides. I want to give it up to Coach John Chase and his Padres for a great, great season here, okay? <laughs> Coach Chase, you like to offer a few words here? Congrats, Guardians. Good job, boys. You guys really played hard all year. Had our number, obviously. Um, honestly, I, before the season started, we drafted the youngest and smallest team in the whole league. These kids are all, I think we have two, three, 12 year olds maybe. Um, and our breakdown every game has been grit. And these guys gritted out all year. At one point, we were one in six with five losses by a combined seven runs. And these guys just did not stop, and I'm so proud of them. And if we had a game tomorrow, I'd go to battle with every single one of them. So really proud of these guys, and congrats again, guys. Good job. Good job, Coach. Great job. All right, now I'd like to turn it over to the winning coach and manager, Oliver Barden, to introduce his team and will award the championship trophies. Here you are, Oliver. So players, as you come up, you're going to get your award, and and face the camera. And they... Very good. Very good. Well, first, thank you, Padres, for a couple of really good games. And good games all year, okay? You guys were tough, and we're glad to, uh, glad to face you. Uh, this guy, these guys, uh, quite a great group. We had a, just a great group. Super deep, top to bottom. Everybody here to play. Uh, great set of coaches too, by the way. I really want to uh, tell you it took the whole village to run the Guardians this year. And I think, uh, you know, my assistant coaches were fantastic. I appreciate it. But it was easy because we had a great, great group who liked to play. It made baseball easy for us. Would you like to call them up one by one? Very good. Attaboy, Guardians. So let's go. First of all, Tycho Barden. Let's go. Thank you. 
There you go. There you go. Okay, very good, very good. Kramer Toto. All right, Kramer. There you go, Kramer. Face the camera. Face the camera. Okay. Max Courier. Let's go, Max. There you go. Can you take my hand. Mm -hmm. Face the camera. Akiva Rosemarin. Way to go, Akiva. Hold well on, kid. Face the camera. Face the camera. Mason Vo. Mason Vo. All right, Mason. Way to make some plays, huh? Way to go, Mason. Face the camera, okay? Shua Cashnow. Hey, Shua. Way to go, Shua. Don't forget to face the camera, okay? Akiva, I'm oh, sorry, Akiva. REA Block. Hey, REA. Hey, hey REA, okay. way to go. Okay. Um, Hayden Hodgson. Way to go, Hayden. All right. Zach Vitulo. Way to go, Zach. Shane Kutka. Way to go, Shane. Noach Wiener. Noach. And Ellie Abbott. All right, Ellie. Way to go, Ellie. Face the camera, okay? All right, let's hear it the Guardians. All right, Guardians, let's go. I'll give that to you. Thank you, Guardians. Well done. And well done, Brookline. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Hodgson. We'll be back after uh, to wrap things up after a quick break. Stay tuned. Dear moms and dads, we know it's not always been easy, and it's been a lot of hard work. What you have achieved here today is going to help us and our futures. It is why we are coming up on stage to collect your diplomas. They graduate. Visit finishyourdiploma.org to find free and supportive adult education centers near you. Welcome back to Elliott Field for ASPN HD. I am Jesse Mayfield Sheehan alongside Craig Chin. And uh, Craig, we just saw one thrilling game to wrap up this Brookline Youth Baseball Major A season. The Guardians are your 2023 BYB Town Champions after securing the 4 to 3 win over the Padres. Craig, that was a thriller. It really was. Uh, you can definitely see these are the two best teams. The Guardians came in averaging eight runs per game in the playoffs, and the Padres are averaging seven. But the four pitchers that took the mound today were really impressive. Apart from a few miscues here and there, it was a really clean game. Akiva Rosemarin gets the win on the mound for the Guardians. Max Courier with the save on the mound. Uh, plenty of big hits to go around for the Guardians. An RBI double by Rose Marin and a couple of big RBI singles by Kramer Toto and Shua Kashno to give them the, all the runs they needed for the win. And of course, Mason Vo fielding that game winning out at short. Congratulations to both teams on such a great game, both the Padres as the town runner up and of course the Guardians as the 2023 Brookline Town Champions. For ASPN HD, for my uh, co-host here, Craig Chin, for our production crew extraordinaires, Arlen Shostak and Chris Murphy, and for all the players, coaches, commissioners, everyone who played a role in making today's awesome game happen, I am Jesse Mayfield Sheehan. Thank you all so much for watching ASPN HD.